All right, let's get into the meat of our show, shall we? It's the high school football season. It starts up on Thursday, and what do we need to know about what's coming up this year? And some of my buddies are here. Sean Patrick Boley of Game Time CT. The sports doctor, Keith O'Brien, is here as well to talk about this season. Gentlemen, thank you so much. Thank hey, you Mark, very much. Thanks for having me. Where did summer go, Mark? It's, it's high school football season already, just like that. Yeah, I feel like it was here last year. They were already here like, not too long it, it ago. Is the, the cycle, when you get older, the cycle gets faster and smaller. Yeah, I guess so. <laughs> it was quick. But it's, ex it's an exciting time. Sean, let me start with you. First, um, let's take a look at, at, at some of the teams, SEC, FCAC, the, the, the CCC, really probably the three strongest conferences. Are we talking again about the same old Daniel Hands going for a third straight, St. Joe's trying for a third straight state title? Uh, yeah, pretty much, but now they're all in the same division. I mean, you have New Canaan, which went to the final, uh, the Class Double L final. Yeah. They've dropped back. they got Drew Pine, who's going to Notre Dame, the great quarterback, his senior year. Then you got Hand, which has won three straight, uh, or two straight titles. They're going for their third. And then they also got to deal with St. Joseph, which is, you know, which has <laughs> won two straight titles in, in S and then M, and now they're going to go play in. Class L is where it's at this year, let me tell you, Mark. Yeah, I know, and it seems like if it's if everybody's in Class L that's so that's so strong, why are there so many divisions? Uh, <laughs> good question. But hey, there's still some good teams in Double L. So. Well, there are there are good teams all over the place. Um, and Keith, uh, in the, the yeah. southeastern part of the state, um, and and the state's small enough as it is, and we'll talk about the scheduling. But on the southeastern part of the state, they're going to play a lot of the schools from around the around the state. But yeah, NFA, New London, a lot of the the typical yeah East Lime and Fitch. And when you're talking about championships on one end of the state, you're talking about schools fighting for respect in the other end of the state. That's yeah. that's how I could best the best way to put the ECC. You've got, you know, NFA is a very, very big school, uh, very tough schedule. Uh, you know, Fitch, a lot of question marks, you know, East Lyme there as well. So you're talking championships on one end of the state. You're talking about respectability in the eastern part of the state. Listen, I don't know if this is the year for the ECC. Things have to break right for certain teams. Yeah, we're going to find out because as we talked about this alliance, the scheduling now, uh, kind of Al Carbone, the, the yeah. commissioner of the yeah. SEC, his brainchild, and, and it's, it's united the ECC with – uh, the CCC and the ABCs and the, the, the SEC, the FCAC, <laughs> all the conferences basically are aligned. And it's, it's not just one game, which is the way it started. It's three or four, right? Yeah, I think Five. all eyes are on teams playing, you know, other teams from the other end of the state. Like we have a new Canaan coming to London in week one. You know, we don't see those teams on this part of the state that often in the eastern part. But, you know, this year with some of the scheduling, you know, Fitch has got to go to Pinnell, you know, to Stratford. So I think it's good for high school football, not only in the eastern part of the state, but, you know, all over as well. All right, Sean, you mentioned real quick, you, you mentioned uh, new Canaan. They're going to make that long trip right away. Does Drew Pine and, and, and does Lou Marinelli have yet another team that can that can win a state title? Well, no, I think so. I mean, listen, they're there every year, it seems like. Uh, but Lou Marinelli has a, has something to say to everyone out there. The poll, the Game Time CT New Haven Register poll drops tomorrow night, and he said, please, please do not vote us number one in the state <laughs> this year. Because we did, we did it the last <laughs> two years, and they went 0-2 to, to start, or 0-1, whatever it was, to start the season last year. They were in big trouble. They got to the final loss to Greenwich, of course. But, you know, he's just... Listen, guys, pick somebody else. So I'm going to go. Well, I'm not going to say who well, we're going to go with. But. Before we leave the Marinelli family, let's let's talk about his son, John, leaving to take a college job at the yeah. University of Arizona. Now Greenwich with a brand new coach. Yeah, Greenwich with a brand new coach, Anthony Morello. He's a, he's a program guy. He's been there with uh, John Marinelli. He knows the system. I think this is the best thing that they could have done was bring a guy in who knows what's going on so they don't skip a beat. That said, they do lose a lot of guys like that guy right there, Gavin Muir, the quarterback, and a lot of these receivers, too, as well, and their linemen especially Mosey Beasy, our player of the year last year. But they do have one guy that you just have to watch this year, and that'd be Tiki Barber's son, A.J. Barber, uh, yes. who made one of the greatest plays I've ever seen in a state championship game last year, and he scored three touchdowns, and he also threw for one. It's ridiculous. They're one of those powerhouses sitting in class double L. The three of us are sitting here, and we've got a lot more to talk about as the high school football season is upon us. You're watching Sports Sunday. Now, welcome back to the high school football preview show, and let's continue on. And 
Uh, Keith O'Brien, the sports doctor with us. Uh, Keith, uh, talking about the southeastern part of the state again, uh, we talked about NFA, but who else uh, will be uh, heard from? In yeah, area? everything starts with the NFA in the league because they're the biggest school and they've got some tremendous skill people and, you know, nasty offensive line up front. You know, third-year coach now, Jason Bakulis. But you know, if you look outside of NFA, how about we, you know, how about New Fitch Falcons? Uh, two years ago, undefeated regular season, lost to Massac, I believe, in his, his state playoffs. Um, they run that double wing. It's a precision offense. It's not a gimmick offense. Mm -hmm. It's a precision offense. James Deckler is their fullback. They have a new quarterback running that offense. If the offensive line gets it, Mark, they could be successful. New London second year coach Johnny Burns trying to, burn, you know, Johnny Burns says, let's bring the bully back in New London. You know, that's, yeah, that's his mind. Hey, a listen, we're, we're whalers. That's what he says. So, and again, another tough non-conference schedule. Frankie Pratt's is their quarterback. Owen George has reclassified. He's at St. Thomas More now. Frankie Pratt's, he can make the throws and when things break down in the pocket, he's got the ability to make something happen with his feet. They've got a lot of good running backs in their stable. New London, a team to keep an eye on. Killingly, obviously, you know, what, four straight trips to the playoffs, a state championship, a 21-game win winning streak along those lines. Yeah, uh, Chad Neal has built a program there. They don't just have a football team. Right. They have got a program. Yeah, absolutely. So, you know, those are your four teams to keep an eye on. East Lyme, keep an eye on them as well. Good offensive right. line. Noah Perry, yeah, Perry's their starting quarterback this year. Uh -huh. The Hart kids. So, four teams there to keep what an eye on. What about Griswold? Griswold's going to be good. They're going to be sneaking up on some people. A cozy old kid, a quarterback, they, he can sling it. And how about Waterford? Everybody talks about Waterford as far as being, you know, a baseball school and, and a basketball state championship school. Yeah. Easy schedule, some good skill people. And then we got some of those baseball kids now playing football this year. And uh, Peyton Sutman, and keep an eye on a kid by the name of Sam Menders, dual sport athlete, very, very good football player. Interesting stuff. And, and Sean, uh, when we, we talk about the powerhouses uh, in other parts of the state, I'm not hearing a lot of talk about Cheshire. Southington yeah. much anymore? I mean, what, what's going well, on? I mean, Cheshire dropped down to SEC Tier 2, one of those things like uh, hand, uh, uh, that Hand did two yes. years ago, which is basically like they're having an easier schedule. They don't have to play all the heavyweights in the league. I don't think I agree with that. Cheshire should always be up in double L. Sorry, guys. But, uh, <laughs> you know, but a team like Southington, they're going to be fine. I mean, they just need to find a quarterback, and then, you know, a lot of their pieces are back. They're always good. They're always going to be in the mix in double L. So those are the, those two teams there. But I think the guys you got definitely got to watch out for in double L, especially is Darien. I remember they won three straight uh, oh, yeah. to yeah. just, and then they lost. They got upset by Newtown, which yeah. is going to be another good team this year. Um, but they got upset by Newtown in the first round last year. I think a lot of those guys, it's stuck in their craw a little bit. And I think that the, you're going to hear from Darien this year too as well. And on the small school, the Class S side of things, and Sony is always there. And I think Ty Outlaw and Bloomfield. I mean, Dryden, yeah. the quarterback, right? They're the best yeah. team. They're, they're the best team in, in, in small school. I mean, you're going to be hearing from this team for a long time. I mean, listen, you have Javon Massey. He's, he's, he was a freshman receiver. He was basically almost, almost all state, if not. I think he was all state. And then their quarterback, Darren Bryan, he's only a junior. I mean, they only lost one guy, basically, which is Kajan Butler. They're great running back. But this team is just loaded from top to bottom. If they don't win the next two uh, state, state championships, championship, yeah. it's yeah. going to be yeah. disappointing. Yeah. And Sonya, of course, get, look at them having this battle in the mud last year. They <laughs> lost on <laughs> fumble <laughs> and Sonia yeah. still has their quarterback back and they also have their running back Shaquille Harmon uh, they're a little low on the numbers right now but listen no one plays harder in, in class s than Tom Brockett's team and I think that they're going to be right there in the end as well all right real quickly let's talk about a challenge Keith that you want to throw out there to the fans of high school football yeah well you know Mark and I, I talked to Sean about this too off the cuff and I'm, I'm just tired of going to a high school football game and seeing empty base you know you see five or six hundred people why not three or four thousand at these games listen in New London and NFA, you've got a chance to see different schools across the state. We want to see people there. These kids have four years of high school sports. Get out and support the games. It's Friday night. It's an event. So listen, go out and support the kids and see some real good football. Sean, would you agree? Yeah, I would agree with that. Listen, they, 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 the crowds have dwindled. They have a lot yeah, of there are a lot of things I, I, going on on a Friday night. There's a lot of things you can well, do. You can catch up on the games when you go back home. There's a lot of a lot of great you know, highlights and media right. that we, you know yeah. you can watch the game on your on your website and you can see a lot of highlights on ours and, and everywhere. And podcasts, and, I want to get those out real quick. You, well, you yeah, both, well, you guys both have podcasts. Right? Yeah, we do one at Game Time CT called the 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 Meat Grinder, <laughs> <laughs> the Sports Doctor podcast on the Day.com Stitch your pod bean. Yeah. It's everywhere. I'm looking forward to game day this year. It's going to be a lot of fun. It's going to be great. Listen, we could talk for about three hours. We just don't have any more time. Uh, it, it's been great. Keith O'Brien, thank you so much. Thanks, Mark. And Sean Patrick Bowley, thank you so much as well. well. Hopefully we'll see
see you guys uh, here in studio <laughs> down the line this season. Absolutely. Let's do it. Have a good year, guys. Uh, it's going to be a great, fantastic high school football season, and we're just getting started. Of course, it all begins this week around the state. And don't forget the big three right here on WFSB Channel 3. Notre Dame, West Haven, Daniel Hand, Avon at Bloomfield, Bristol Eastern at Middletown. Who's going to be part of the big three on three? That's up to you to vote. The winning game will be determined on Friday night. Start and, uh, and all the voting starting on Eyewitness News coming up. All right, that's going to wrap things up for this edition of Sports Sunday. Again, I want to thank Sean and Keith for coming in. Don't forget to join us this Friday night, 11-15, the season debut of Friday Night Football, f and here on Channel 3. For our sports producer, Mark Fijakowski, I'm Mark Robbins. We'll see you soon. Good night, everybody.